looked at my reflection in the glass and down at the layers of city below my feet. I wondered why I'd opened up to Cat about feeling weird at our old place. I didn't want her to think I still missed her. Maybe I did, because something still hurt when I saw her. Although it might just have been the memory of not getting something we wanted, of having failed. As good as we may be at making sense of things, there are some we can't work into the narrative. It would seem that I'm back to my bread and butter genre, pixel adventure games. And it's another science fiction mystery one at that. Although this one does have some more Blade Runner and Detective Noir influence thrown in as opposed to the speculative philosophical science fiction of Primordia. But still, this game has proven to be rather interesting to play through and I can't wait to tell you all about it. We're dealing with something decently obscure here from what I can tell, so who knows, maybe this game will earn a spotlight for itself, assuming this review goes anywhere. Regardless, it's time to put on your overcoats and start doing some hard thinking. This is Lacuna. Lacuna is a member of the pixel adventure renaissance, as I like to see it. Mixing the old graphical style of point-and-click adventure games a la LucasArts with modern VFX technology to enhance the art to a point that couldn't have been done in the past. And I think it works. It's not something that's necessarily crazy unique looking in terms of style, but it's a good mix of classic noir and moderately far future cyberpunk and overall sci-fi. Combined with the music and sound effects, however, and this game has got an atmosphere that you simply cannot ignore. The sights of the massive multi-layered megacity, the sounds of the trains and wandering footsteps, all while a contemplative song plays in the background just nails the future noir feeling. You'll notice that there's a lot of footage of me just walking from place to place, not even using the sprint button to get there faster. Part of the reason for me doing that is the fact that taking it slow and walking allows you to really take in the atmosphere, getting really immersed into this world while also giving you time to think over everything that's happened in the story so far. Speaking of, let's get to that. The story, I think, is what ended up surprising me the most here. Gonna be honest, at the beginning I thought this game was gonna be pretty simple on the story front. A cool the war story with a neat little investigative gameplay loop to keep you going for a few hours, that sort of thing. But I found that the designers did a really good job with the story. I don't want to spoil it, obviously, but it's a story of assassination, conspiracy, and interplanetary rivalry where you, a federal agent, are stuck in the middle trying to solve the mystery while not getting himself killed or those he cares about killed. 
This mystery and the sub-mysteries involved could have easily been led along the most obvious routes possible for the sake of making the story simpler and easier to deal with, like how most post LucasArts point and clicks, not to disparage them, but they didn't really give you much of a chance to actually fail. You could mostly brute force their puzzles if you didn't figure out the logic behind them. Like a kid giving up trying to put the square peg in the round hole and instead smashing the round hole to make it big enough for the peg. Lacuna doesn't do that. Instead, Lacuna gives you multiple opportunities to get it wrong, to screw up the investigation or any other situations you're stuck in, with actual consequences. The game has about eight endings that accommodate for your various choices, so if you screw up and let someone get away or cause an accident, that's on you and the game's gonna have consequences for you later. And it won't warn you of when you've made a mistake or not like the past 10 years of Telltale games have. See? You can be subtle and it'll work out better. Now on the note of choices, the gameplay. Normally, I would call this a point-and-click adventure in terms of gameplay, but you don't necessarily do that much pointing and clicking. Most you do in that regard is navigating your menu and clicking on specific things you can investigate. Everything else, from moving around, to talking to people, to interacting with objects, not investigating them, can all be done with just the WASD keys and the E key. So, I guess you could call it a clack-and-click game? Eh, maybe. Regardless, navigation and investigation itself is pretty basic, since this is a story-focused game. There's a lot of reading, from dialogue to emails to newspapers, and you can't just skim it, either. Assuming you don't want to screw up, you gotta really be careful and take notice of how people are talking to you and what context things are written in, that sort of thing. Your main gameplay goal is to investigate crime scenes and answer these fill-in-the-blank sheets by piecing together the evidence you have. If you submit the sheet wrong, there can be consequences later down the line, especially if you start getting multiple ones wrong. Aside from that, there's dialogue choices that influence what evidence you may or may not have, so you have to be careful when talking to people so as to make sure you don't accidentally miss a crucial piece of evidence. Unless you've already figured it out, that is. But even then, evidence can change as you continue on, especially ones based on testimony, so you gotta be careful about that. It's not the most action-packed or engaging gameplay out there, but it does get you thinking, and the moments where action does break out, does feel pretty tense. It wasn't until I was on my way back to the train that I noticed the park's obscene size. The night was cool, and the mansion district was probably the quietest place in the whole center. It was one of the last spots in the area where buildings hadn't been stacked on top of each other like toy blocks. My head was unusually clear, and to my surprise, I noticed that I was in a good mood. In retrospect, I believe that it stemmed from a sense of purpose driving me forward that night. And that is Lacuna, a neat little pixel adventure game that I found myself engaged in far more than I initially believed. It started out a little slow, but the intrigue ramped up really quick, and I found I genuinely just wanted to keep going to see how it all played out. And there's the added tension of eight different endings, so you know some of those are some level of bad. Overall, I found it a very enjoyable and relatively short detective game, going for only slightly more than six hours for my playthrough. For a $15 price tag, I'd say that's pretty good, especially with the replay value. This has been The Ratman, and I will see you all later.